Alright, I'm finally finished with Excel Saga. <sighs> and let me tell you, this anime really tried my sanity at times. What sanity? Though I did try to kill myself several times while watching the series, in the end I did manage to make it all the way through. Now, with an introduction like that, you probably think I absolutely hated this series and that I'm gonna tear it a new arsehole, right? Well, no actually. While I did hate it, I can't really say that it's a bad anime. I find that Excel Saga is one of those series that you're either really gonna love or you're just gonna hate, and personally I was on the latter half of that. However, I wouldn't advise people against watching it, I'd say at the very least give it a shot and see if it's for you. It wasn't for me, but that's just me. Trust me, this isn't the worst anime I've seen. I've seen much worse. I'll give credit where it's due. While the first episode is a load of random crap that didn't really make much sense at all, everything after that did gain some sort of a structure. At least to a point. Look, I get the idea. You're taking the franchise and experimenting putting its plot into different genres. It's an interesting concept, I just felt it was poorly executed here. To make a comparison, I know the School Rumble anime came out much later, but it's a good example of how a series can parody other genres with its plot. Occasionally in Season 1, and a lot more in Season 2, it would put its characters and its setting into situations that you wouldn't typically associate them with. However, it adapted them very well and made them work as parody humour. Unfortunately, none of those situations resulted in Tenma Skomato's death. I still don't understand why you hate Tenma Skomato. However, in the case of Excel Saga, they would just dump the characters into a certain genre with no adaptations to how they work to fit in with it, and basically they would just poke fun at certain aspects of said genre. Though I will admit it did make me chuckle when they were poking fun at both Japanese and American animation. But, like I say, I don't necessarily think this is a bad series, it's just not my kind of series. However, if you like weird and wacky and random humour, then you might just enjoy this series and you might want to give it a go. Though I will warn you though, there is a lot of innuendo in this series. A lot of innuendo. Oh, and before anyone asks, no, I did not watch episode 26, and I absolutely refuse to. This series was already messed up enough as it is, and from what I've read, that episode would probably send me over the edge. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, well, basically, when the series first broadcast on TV, there were 25 episodes. However, when the DVDs were released, there was an extra 26th episode. This episode intentionally took everything too far, showing content that was way too inappropriate and graphic to be shown on TV. The whole purpose of it was to push the boundaries of what they could get away with. Anybody who's watched this episode has said they were completely scarred by it, and, well, this series has already scarred me enough as it is, so I don't actually think I want to watch it. However, it's not required to. As I said, it's only really a bonus, kind of like OVA episode. But in any case, let's begin discussing the characters of this series, because I have a lot to go over with them. Let's start with the leading lady herself, Excel Excel. No, really, her full name is Excel Excel. Huh. Excel is without a doubt one of the most annoying and absolutely revolting characters I have ever come by. Seriously, this girl seems to have a limitless amount of energy and won't stand still for even five seconds. Half the time she's just running about babbling on about the most random and nonsensical bullshit. She speaks so unbelievably fast that half the time I can't even understand what the hell she's saying. But you know what? After about the first five episodes, I just plain stopped caring about what she had to say. It didn't make any sense anyway. Excel is just batshit insane. All the while I was watching her, I just felt like saying to her, Oh, Excel! Yeah, Kate? Stand still! Seriously, what is wrong with this girl? Where does she get all her energy from? What caused her to go batshit insane? On top of being annoying though, she's also absolutely gross. Seriously, she's repulsive. I mean, as I pointed out with the first episode, she rips her chest open and makes herself throw up, but that was only the beginning. She hangs out in a sewer when conspiring with a cross, so obviously she smells. In one episode, she's scratching her ass at the beginning of it. She says her swimsuit is an old filthy one that somebody threw out. She has a certain thing about hanging out in bathrooms. 
Heck, in one episode near the end of the series, she actually pulls a book out of her vagina. She pulls a book out of her vagina. I'm not even kidding about that. She reaches down into her trousers, not into a pocket, oh no. She actually reaches down into the front of her trousers and pulls a book out from what I can only assume was her vagina. She is just utterly gross. I personally would feel filthy just being within five feet of Excel. <laughs> hey, are you okay? Yeah, that was weird. Anyway, Excel is annoying and gross. And she smells. I personally couldn't stand her. Now, moving on to the other leading lady, Hyatt. Alright, I'm gonna put this simply. Hyatt was a whore. No, seriously. Hyatt was a whore. How was she a whore, you ask? Well, how long have you got? Let's start with what she does to that banana in the freaking intro to the show. Seriously, you watch that and tell me she's not imagining it's something else when she's... Yeah. In the fourth episode, she goes on one of those children's rides that goes back and forth, and then out of nowhere she just starts having an orgasm on it. No, seriously, she does. In episode 13, her and Excel have microphones, and then suddenly she starts rubbing hers against her face. Again, you watch that and tell me she's not imagining it's something else. She makes comments about... <clears throat> finger training in one episode. Not to mention the way she humps the floor when she dies. Hyatt just wants a penis in her 24-7. She was a complete and utter whore. And the joke about her dying in every episode was... Honestly, quite disturbing. Especially considering how, in some episodes, it's implied that the way she comes back to life is by absorbing life from other living things. Just makes me think that if we were fooling around, not that I would because she's probably got several space STDs, that she'd randomly die in the middle of it and then bring herself back to life by absorbing life from my junk. That's a really terrifying thought. Haya is just as gross as Excel, but in a completely different way. She's a space whore that coughs up blood every five minutes. Now, as for that almighty leader, Lord Oompa Loompa, I personally thought- I've been meaning to tell you this, by the way. His name is Lord Il Palazzo, not Lord Oompa Loompa. I don't care, Emma. I just- I- I really don't care. Anyway, as for Lord Oompa Loompa, well, quite honestly, he confuses me. I mean, just why does he want to conquer that city anyway? Yeah, he says it's because the world is corrupt, but is that seriously his entire motivation? We get no real explanation as to why he wants to conquer the city, or what the deal is with his multiple personalities or anything. Heck, the stuff with the other version of his mind in the last couple of episodes felt completely out of left field and got no explanation at all. For that matter, just what the heck is a cross anyway? We get no explanation of just who this guy is, where he came from, or why he's got this goal of conquest in mind. Seriously, just who the heck are you, Lord Oompa Loompa? It's Lord Ilpala... You know what, never mind. As for Excel's neighbours... Well, quite honestly, I thought they were a bunch of losers. One Nabe was the only one of them I even came close to liking. Heck, he's probably the only character in the series I even came close to liking. Out of all of them, he was the only one who was trying to make something of himself and make a difference in his life. Granted, he was doing it all to impress Hyatt, but hey, it's as good a motivation as any. Yeah, he's kind of got a bit of a short temper, but when you're surrounded by two annoying guys who follow you everywhere, anybody would have a short temper. Seriously, don't those two have any life outside of his? I know they all live together, but they don't have to follow him everywhere. Anyway, Watanabe might be a loser, but at least he's trying to make something of himself. When it comes to Shumiyoshi, I don't really get it with him. He doesn't speak, he only talks through text. Text that most of the time doesn't say anything interesting. <laughs> Whatever. I absolutely loathed Iwata. He was nothing but scum. He treats women as nothing more than objects. He's nothing but a scumbag who deserves every bit of pain that comes his way. Wow, he feels really strongly on this. <laughs> okay. Constantly objectifying women and lusting towards them as if they serve no other purpose than to be his sex objects. 
This man is scum. And am I the only one who thinks this guy looks like Gary Oak? Seriously, am I the only one saying this? But anyway, I just wanted to hurt this scumbag. Women are people, not objects, you bastard. Somebody needs to teach you a lesson in respect. You know what? If you do get together with Ropen Matsu, I hope you get electro gonorrhea. I really do. Women are not objects. They deserve respect and... <sighs> hey, are you okay? It looked like you were about to say something important there. Yeah, well, I made my point. An old habit creeping up on you again, huh? <laughs> anyway, about Matsuya... Ugh... Oh. She bothers me. Why? What's wrong with her? I thought somebody who causes Iwata pain would be okay in your books. She just... She bothers me, okay? Look, I can't talk about her, alright? Tomiki, you take over this part. Well, personally I thought Mitsuya was a fine young lady. However, her temper was very unbecoming of such a fair young maiden. However, given that she had to put up with a plebeian like Iwata, it is perfectly understandable. However, to see a beautiful young lady resort to violence was- This is going to be painful. Are you alright? Yeah, it's just... She looks... She looks so much like her. I know. I was surprised too when I saw her for the first time. The resemblance is uncanny and it just bothers me, that's all. It just reminds me that- I know. Look, we're gonna find a way to fix this and make it all right again. Yeah, I know we will. I know. I'm sorry. It's alright, I understand. She looks a lot like her and it's hard for you. Yeah, but I'll be okay. Let's go see if Tomoki's done yet. And that is why I will always be richer than you. Okay, he never runs this show again. Agreed. The only other characters actually worth talking about are the Ropen Matsus. Not really a lot I can say about Unit 1. It's the quiet, polite bomb disposal robot who sucks at its job. By the way, what is it about Japan and trying to portray robots in an attractive way? But in any case, I really don't think that much about Robomatsu Unit 1. However, about Robomatsu Unit 2, well... Well, let me put it to you this way. I fear no man, but that thing... It scares me. Why? Well, it's a robotic, furry, lolita, lesbian rapist. A robotic, furry, lolita, lesbian rapist. Do I really need to say any more than that? You're probably wondering, what do you mean rapist? Well, in one episode, and I'm seriously not kidding about this, it rapes Excel. It rapes Excel. It's a robotic furry Lolita that shoots missiles out of its knees that rapes Excel. Do I really need to say more? And yes, it actually shoots missiles out of its knees. Skyrim's got nothing on that. What makes it all worse is how it was built by a paedophile scientist. Yes, her creator was actually a paedophile. And I thought Iwata was scum. This guy is lower than scum. You, sir, are lower than dirt. And if I ever get my hands on you, it won't be pretty. Mark my words. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to make you suffer. Oh, and some of you are probably wondering what I thought of Nabashin. Well, he's the director's self-insert fanfic character. No, seriously, he's the director's self-insert fanfic character. Honestly, I don't really think all that much of him, because most of the time he was only there as a plot device. Not really much I can say there. And a couple of you are probably going to ask what I thought of Pedro as well. Well, look, quite honestly, I didn't care about his little subplot. Look, I just didn't care about the character and whatever antics he got into. His plot seemed to only be there to pad out the episode. His life was just one unfortunate event after another, but 
honestly, whenever I was watching him, I just found myself saying, I really just don't care. Still, I can admire the guy's determination to get his son and sexy wife back. <laughs> what is it? What's everybody hating about? Don't worry, Emma. Anyway, that's really all I can say about the cast. Anyway, as for the dubbing... I thought it was... questionable. Some of the characters sounded alright, but my problem lies with Excel and Lord Oompa Loompa. Excel's voice was just annoying and raspy and hard to bear at times, though I have had some people tell me that her Japanese voice was even worse, but seeing as I only watched the dub, I can't really make a comparison. Her second voice was a little more tolerable, but still incredibly annoying, though I guess that makes sense for the character. For those of you who don't get what I mean by second voice, well, basically, in the English dub of Excel Saga, Excel's original English voice actor lost her voice about halfway during the series because of how raspy the voice was and how quickly the character talks. Apparently, she did all the fast talking naturally, and hey, all the credit to her in the world for doing that, but in the end, it put such a strain on her vocal cords that she ended up losing her voice. I don't see why they couldn't have just recorded her speaking normally and then just sped it up after that, but again, all credit to her for doing all the fast talking naturally. But yeah, about halfway through the series they did have to get Excel a new voice actor. Thankfully her original voice actor did eventually regain the use of her voice and has since returned to voice acting. But as for why Lord Oompa Loompa's voice bothered me, well, while I do like Jason Douglas, most of the time he made Lord Oompa Loompa sound really cheerful even when his face was deadpan. I don't know if this is how they did it in the Japanese version as well, but it just looked really weird to me how his expression was completely blank, but yet he was giving this huge, cheerful speech about how they will conquer the city. Seriously, it was like this. Agents excel and Hyatt. The world is corrupt, so we, the idealistic organisation of Across, shall conquer this city and save the ignorant masses from themselves. Across shall be victorious. It's just jarring! But again, I don't know if this was done in the original Japanese version or not. Though, all credit to the dubbers, this is the first time I've actually heard the F word used in an English dub. Yeah, there's usually swearing, but I thought the F word was the absolute limit. However, in this dub, Excel actually uses the F word several times. Though naturally now everybody is going to tell me about other English dubs where they use the F word. But anyway, that's what I thought of Excel Saga. I didn't particularly enjoy it, but that's just me. Honestly, I do suggest just watching it and seeing what you think for yourself. You'll either love it or hate it, it's just one of those series. I suppose I should go back to preparing for Takia's eventual assault. I can feel him getting closer now. You're right, I can sense him too. He reeks of hatred. Just who is this Takia person you all keep going on about? Why won't you tell me? Why are you keeping me in the dark? Actually, Emma, I think it's about time I did tell you just who Takia is and what my history with him is. R really? Yeah, I've kept you in the dark for way too long and I'm sorry about that, Emma. You, you're apologising to me? That's a first. But look, now I'm going to tell you everything about Takia. Thanks, Kay. It all started a few years back when I was- <laughs> Ugh, There's- uh, There's that feeling again. Kay, are you alright? Yeah, I'm- I- Oh. Kay! Kay, Jeff, are you alright? <laughs> so you're my target, Excel Excel, eh? <laughs> I thought you'd be more of a threat. 